This question is about the ozone layer in the upper atmosphere. State why the ozone layer is beneficial for living organisms. Well, the ozone layer absorbs harmful ultraviolet radiation, so it prevents that ultraviolet radiation from reaching us, and so as a result of that, we have a reduced risk of skin cancer that ultraviolet radiation can cause. Either of those two is fine for this answer. State how chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, form chlorine atoms in the upper atmosphere. Well, if I draw a diagram of a CFC at the bottom here, you can see we've got a carbon in the middle with chlorine bonded to that carbon and fluorine bonded to that carbon. And what happens is the presence of this ultraviolet radiation can make homolytic fission occur. And what that means is the carbon to chlorine bond can break and it breaks like so, and we end up with a carbon atom with a free radical on and a chlorine atom with a free radical on. And it's that chlorine atom with the free radical that is so reactive. And then in part C, they ask us to give equations to show how chlorine atoms can catalyze the decomposition of ozone. Ozone, which is O3, can decompose and turn into O2. And to balance this, we simply need two O3 molecules and three oxygen molecules. And so this is the overall reaction. And what we're about to write in part C are the two separate steps that happen and provide us with this overall reaction. And so what happens is chlorine reacts with the ozone and we end up making this ClO free radical and oxygen. And then the ClO free radical will react with more ozone and turn into chlorine free radicals and yet more oxygen, this time two oxygen. And these are the two equations we need to say for our marks. But it's important to note from these equations that the chlorine free radical is acting as a catalyst, as the question says. And we know that because it is a reactant of the first step, but a product of the second step. So overall, it isn't changed. And that's a characteristic of a catalyst. And we know that the ClO free radical is an intermediate because it is made in the first step and then reused in the second step. And again, that is a characteristic of an intermediate. And so overall, those two equations add together to give the O3 turns into O2 equation that I've drawn at the bottom. And we can see that because if you were to add these two equations together like a simultaneous equation, we'd be able to simplify out all of the free radicals because they would both appear on either side of the expression and they'd simplify out. In part B, we're told that hydrochlorofluorocarbons have been used in place of CFCs. And in the mechanism to make a HCFC from a fluoroalkane, two incomplete steps are shown. And we've been asked to complete each step of this mechanism and give the name of the type of step shown by those two equations that we're about to complete. And so actually we should probably start with the type of step because you can see that we've got something in the reactants turning into some products which have got a free radical and then free radicals are the reactants down here and then they're turning into some products. And actually these are propagation steps and we know that this must be happening because we're going to need to have something that's a free radical in both of these spaces because otherwise where did that unpaired electron go? And a characteristic of propagation reactions is it is something that uses free radicals and produces free radicals. The other option in this mechanism, which overall is called free radical substitution, is there are initiation steps, which is where something without free radicals turns into two free radical products, or termination steps, which are the opposite of initiation. We start with two free radical reactants and we produce a product that doesn't have any free radicals. So we know that we're looking for propagation reactions and we know that our reactant in the first equation needs to have a free radical. And so this is a little bit different to typical 
on the A-level chemistry course, the free radical substitution that we need to know about is when methane turns into chloromethane and hydrogen chloride through a reaction with Cl2. Now this is more complicated because we're not reacting methane, we can't be reacting methane because this free radical that's a product of propagation step one has got fluorine in it. And so if we think about overall what happens in this reaction is chlorine turns into free radicals as I'm showing in that first initiation step and then one of those chlorine free radicals pulls a hydrogen away from the methane and we get HCl. Now this is going to be really similar, but because we aren't making a methyl free radical, we're making this free radical, that means the thing that was had its hydrogen pulled away has to be the hydrofluorocarbon, which is basically this, but with an extra hydrogen on it. And so that's gonna be the first of our two reactants. And I've already said what the second of our two reactants is going to be. It's going to be a chlorine atom. And then the second step has got the hydrofluorocarbon free radical reacting with more chlorine and we're going to make our halogenoalkane product which is going to be one of those chlorines joined on to the free radical which I've got here and the other chlorine atom from the molecule is going to make a chlorine free radical. And then this could then go back to the start and react again and this cycle could com continue indefinitely really. And so whilst these propagation steps are different to the ones that you've been asked to learn, they are really similar in principle. A chlorine free radical pulls away a hydrogen atom in step one, leaving us with a new free radical. That new free radical was an intermediate because it will then react again with yet more chlorine and will make our halogenoalkane and more chlorine atoms which can act as catalysts and so this reaction can repeat itself. Okay, that's the end of this question and the end of the video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.